Hey first graders, if you liked The Bad Seed, I think you'll enjoy The Good Egg. It's by the same people, Jory Chom and Pete Oswald. So you might already have some predictions as to what this book's going to be about, if you remembered what The Bad Seed was about. The Good Egg. Oh, hello. I was just rescuing this cat. Know why? Because I'm a good egg. A very good egg. It's true. I do all kinds of good things, like I'll carry your groceries, I'll water your plants, I'll change your tires, I'll paint your house. If you need any help whatsoever, I'm your egg. I've always been a good egg. It's been this way since the start, even in my early days back at the store. There were a, a dozen of us living together under one recycled roof. And if you don't know what a dozen means... That's how many um, eggs will often come in a carton. And you can count the eggs to see how many a dozen is. Maybe you might count a row here and double it. There was Meg and Peg and Greg and Clegg and Shell and Shelly and Sheldon and Shelby and Egbert and Frank and other Frank. I wonder which ones are Frank and other Frank. I'm going to guess these two back here. The other 11 eggs weren't on their best behavior. They weren't exactly good. They ignored their bedtime. They only ate sugary cereal. They threw tantrums. They cried for no reason. They broke their stuff on purpose. Oh. Meanwhile, I tried to take charge. I tried to fix their bad behavior. I tried to keep the peace. Because I was a good egg. A very good egg. Nobody seemed to care, though. Every night I was exhausted. My head felt scrambled. Then, one fateful morning, I noticed some cracks in my shell. They were everywhere. Yikes! There's a sign on his back that says, kick me. Why do you think he has cracks in his head? Looks like he's going to the doctor. My doctor said it was from all the pressure I was putting on myself. The pressure of making sure everybody was as good as me. I love this page because he's got yolk going in. You can see the x-ray in the back and the anatomy would show you what's inside the egg. I thought that part was funny. I was cracking up. Literally, something had to change. I'd had enough. I told Meg and Peg and Greg and Clegg and Shell and Sheldy and Sheldon and Shelby and Egbert and Frank and other Frank that I was leaving. I can't be the only good egg in a bad carton, I said. Blah, 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 they replied. I left that night. I wandered from town to town. The hours became days. The days became weeks. I lost track of time. Look at his beard. I was alone. Out there on the road, under the stars, I really tried to focus on myself and what I needed. What do you notice about the cracks? I took walks. I read books. I floated in the river. I wrote in my journal. I found simple moments to be quiet. I breathed in. I breathed out. I even started painting. For once, I found time for me. Look at the clock. And guess what? Little by little, the cracks in my shell started to heal. My head no longer felt scrambled. I started to feel like myself again. So I've made a big decision. I'm returning to my old carton and my friends. Besides, I'm kind of lonely out here. This time, I know what I need to do. I'll try not to worry so much. I'll be good to my fellow eggs while also being good to myself. Here we go. Everybody missed me. I missed them too. Welcome home! 
Hello, Meg. Howdy, Peg. Hey, Greg. Greetings, Clegg. What's up, Shell? Aloha, Shelly. Hey, yo, Sheldon. Hi, Shelby. Good day, Egbert. What's happening, Frank? How do you do, other Frank? Most of them seem so excited to see him. Sure. Every once in a while, somebody's still a little bit bad. But it's not like before. Here's what I realized. The other eggs aren't perfect, and I don't have to be either. I'm okay with that. Yes, the old carton is back together. We're a solid dozen again. It's good to be home. <laughs> the end. I hope you enjoyed.